Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. Today is January 30th, 2019. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say this. Something must be wrong with my computer. Right? Someone must have hacked my system because my computer is telling me that slow as molasses, Joe Joyce somehow is a greater than eight to one favorite over Bermain's Tavern. That's a joke, right? Is it January 30th or is it April 1st? Look, I'll be blunt with you. I don't know who's going to win the fight. I imagine whoever wins the fight is going to do so by stoppage. But one guy has fought Deontay Wilder twice. The first time, he goes the distance with Wilder. <clears throat> right? He goes the distance with Wilder before Tyson Fury does. One guy has fought Chris Ariola twice. Showed some very good back foot, back up against the rope skills in that fight. That's the guy who's the 8-1 to one underdog in the fight. Joe Joyce, by contrast, has had seven pro fights. I understand he fought Alexander Usyk before he turned pro and things like that. Okay, I, I get all that. He's had seven pro fights. Seven pro fights. Now let me say too that Joe Joyce is a 6'6 puncher. Right? He's going to try to hunt down Bermain Stavern. Now let me just say I know Stavern got drilled by Wilder. By the way, there was a reason why Stavern was in a title fight. Right? Understand Stavern has fought for the title multiple times. Understand Stavern 21 knockouts in 25 pro fights. Let me also say, too, that Wilder clearly has one of the biggest punches in boxing, right? Joe Joyce might as well. I'm not going to sleep on Joyce's power. I was stunned at how beaten up Joe Hanks was when he fought Joyce. I thought Hanks was going to beat Joyce. But what I want people to contemplate here is the fact that Bermain Stavern has one of the biggest punches in the sport as well. Don't be blinded by the other guy's power. Okay, sure, Wilder landed. Wilder took him out. Right? No question about it. Devastating series of, of KOs. Right? Devastating. But go through Stavern's history here online, and we have the benefit of it. You can look up Stavern's prior fights. Look at the condition of the guys he drops. Look at Chris Ariola after he gets stopped by Stavern. Ariola looks, quite frankly, like he's been in a car crash. Right, Stavern, huge punch. Huge punch. Now, while I have no doubt that if Joyce lands flush, Stavern goes, right? He's been knocked out two times in his career. You saw him get stopped in dramatic form by Deontay Wilder. I also have no doubt, I mean I have no doubt, that if Stavern lands flush on Joyce, he's gonna go. I also have no doubt that given the slow hands of both guys, right, neither guy is blessed with great hand speed. Both guys take a day or so to land a punch. Right? Given the slow hands 
of both guys, punches are going to land, right? Because these guys just aren't wired in a way where they can move quickly. So sure, the punch is going to take a day to get there, right? Think snail mail versus email. But understand, the defense is going to take a while to get there. Right? Stavern, quite frankly, is better defensively than Joe Joyce. So, in my opinion, Stavern should be favored in this fight. I know that sounds ridiculous, but he should be favored in this fight. Don't fall in love too much with the Deontay Wilder footage. Right? What they're, what they're doing is, you know, the press takes your worst moment, your worst moment, and forgets all the other miles you've driven. Right? They focus on the car crash. Not the fact that you fought for the title multiple times. Not the fact that you went the distance with Deontay Wilder. Let me tell you, I was in Vegas when they fought the first time. I was in the MGM sports book talking to some gamblers. And the opinion was split in the room on who was going to win remains to Vern against Deontay Wilder. Nobody thought Stavern was blessed with foot speed, right? People were wondering what would happen if Stavern, who moves slowly, <clears throat> collapsed the pocket, right? And the idea was Deontay Wilder, who at that point had a 100% KO ratio. The feeling was that Wilder might stand his ground, trade with Stavern. Right, that Wilder might have the faster hands. In fact, Wilder does have the faster hands. Right, that Wilder wouldn't leave the pocket. And then when the fight happened, folks, Wilder left the pocket. Right, Wilder knew you cannot stay in the pocket and trade with Bermain Stavern. Right now, just a few fights later, and Wilder wins the rematch in dramatic fashion. No question about it. But just a few fights later, I'm supposed to believe that Bermain Stavern is so washed up. Right? He's lost once since then. Right? He loses that fight. He loses the rematch to Wilder. Wilder, by the way, officially still unbeaten. Right? I had Fury winning that fight, but Wilder's officially unbeaten. All I'm saying to you is because of getting blown out in the rematch against Wilder, you mean to tell me Bermain Stavern is an 8-1 to one favorite against some dude with seven pro fights who's not defensively blessed, who doesn't have quick hands? Give me a break. I'm shocked at the line, right? My point to you is this fight at a minimum, at a minimum, is a hell of a lot closer to a 50-50 fight than the odds here suggest. If you're looking for an undervalued play, one that quite frankly could get you eight to one rate of return, right? Consider remains to Vern at eight to one over Joe Joyce. For people looking to hedge, I think the hedge is a simple one. I think the hedge is Joyce by KO, right? That remains to Vern Deontay Wilder fight where Stavern gets KO, thinks he's hit in the back of the head when the film shows he's hit on the chin. That fight was his last fight. Fighters are human just like the rest of us, right? Sometimes it's hard to get back behind the wheel after that bad accident. Right? Keep in mind, Bermain Stavern's last fight was in 2017. Right? That's when Wilder knocked him out. A lot of time has passed. Stavern 
I'm sure has been in the gym sparring and keeping in shape, especially given the openings in today's heavyweight division, right? It's so wide open. Even guys with nothing to prove, like Vladimir Klitschko, are thinking about coming out of retirement to fight some of these guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> All I'm saying is a guy like Bermades Deverne looking around, Seeing some overhyped guys, knowing that his punch is as good, really, as any punch in the heavyweight division today. I'm telling you, this guy hits hard, right? The knock on Stavern, apart from hand speed and foot speed, is the fact that he's such a big hitter. Think Ernie Shavers, that people question his ability to box you. Right? His punching power has never been doubted. Right? So he knows. This is your proverbial big hitter who knows he's one punch away from the heavyweight title. Right? His depth of experience, the fact that Joe Joyce is older than you think. Joyce is in his 30s, folks. He's not a young lion. Right? The mistakes I see a guy making in his 30s are mistakes that are just inherent to the guy. Right? You see a 21 year old making mistakes, you say, you know what? This guy's just starting out. He's learning the sport. With experience, he'll make adjustments. I see a guy in his 30s making mistakes. Hey, the dude can't make adjustments. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. Right? I look at Joe Joyce, I see a young, well, guy in his 30s. I see a green fighter. Right? Joe Joyce, both of these guys are older than Anthony Joshua, just to put it in perspective. Right? I think Joyce is a green fighter. I think Joyce is living off of an amateur reputation, right? Not anything he's done in the pros. Right? He's going up against a guy who hits as hard as he does. That's important. Who has better defense and who has much more experience. Who himself has fought other big hitters. Right? Deontay Wilder. Keep in mind, too, Bermain Stavern has fought some slick guys. Ray Austin, if you go deeper into his background. So consider the 8 to 1 odds a gift, especially given the easy hedge of Joyce by KO, right? Understand, Wilder goes the distance against Deverne by leaving the pocket, by moving. I want you to look at that first fight. Revisit it, right? Joe Joyce doesn't have that level of foot speed. Joe Joyce is not the athlete that Deontay Wilder is, right? Joyce, I believe, is going to draw a line in the sand. I believe Joyce, who, again, is in his 30s, wants to put his name in the heavyweight championship sweepstakes. So, Wilder destroyed Stavern in the rematch. I believe Joyce wants to at least try to match or come close to that performance. The fight is in Joyce's backyard. Sometimes that works against the fighter. People come to see you. You feel more pressure. You're a knockout puncher. You feel you have to get the knockout. Right? Let me say, too, there's more to hit on Joyce than there is Stavern. Stavern is four inches shorter. Stavern knows how to turtle. Right? Stavern can hide his upper body. How is 6'6 Joyce going to hide his midsection? Again, I'm just telling you, Stavern hits hard. The play I'm recommending here, the play I like, and remember, play at your own risk. The play I like is the underdog. At 8 to 1, Bermain Stavern to win the fight, hedged with Joyce by KO, right? Given the fact that you're getting 8-1 to one on one side of the play, 
Joyce by KO could be a minus 200, a minus 300, even a minus 400. And you can make the play because of the 8 to 1 leverage you're getting on the Remain Stavern side of the ledger. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Also, leave the odds you're seeing on this fight from your casino. Right? As I've said, it's January the 30th. The casino I check with has Stavern as an 8 to 1 underdog. Tell us the odds posted at your casino. This, to me, is a huge casino mispricing. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.